You are listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. I'm your host, Adam Rosen. I'm a fellowship-trained, board-certified orthopedic surgeon who specializes in knee replacement. Here I'll talk to you about common knee complaints and other orthopedic issues. We'll cover other important health-related topics, all of which are meant to helpfully answer some of your questions and help improve the quality of your life. Thanks for listening, and on with the next episode. Hello and welcome back. This is Adam Rosen and you're listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. In today's episode, I would like to talk to you about something called prepatellar bursitis. This is a very common complaint and something that most people can treat at home by themselves. So what is a bursa? Well, a bursa is a fluid-filled sac, typically around a joint, but its goal in the body is to reduce friction between two surfaces rubbing and there are lots and lots of bursa all around your entire body. Now, commonly these are described in pictures as this blue circular oval-looking area, when in reality, it's not a true fluid-filled sac that you would take out and show to somebody and say, oh, this is that bursa, like that blue circle picture that you saw, but it's more of a yellowy, spongy kind of material. It can be quite thin unless it gets injured or inflamed or swollen. And those little sponge-like pockets can fill with fluid, and it can cause a large amount of fluid accumulation or this lump or mass around the area that is inflamed. So in front of the knee, there is a fluid-filled sac uh, that can become significantly painful in some individuals, and this has been called bursitis of the knee or pre-patellar bursitis because it's pre in front of patella, the kneecap, um, or the patellar tendon. So it's usually in the area of your knee where, as if you would kneel down, that would be the surface that would be laying on the the carpet or the asphalt or the stone or the grass where you might be working. And for that reason, it's been called over the years things such as housemaid's knee or rug cutter's knee or carpet layer's knee because commonly when people are doing these activities, that can be the cause of these symptoms developing. So this little space in front of the knee meant to prevent friction now because you've fallen on it or you've been kneeling on it for a while becomes inflamed. And then when it becomes inflamed, it starts to fill with fluid. And it can be as small as something like a small marble or as large as a racquetball. And the larger it is, typically the more painful and problematic it is. And even in some patients that don't have necessarily pain as the main complaint, they might note that it's difficult then to kneel on their knee because they have this lump over that area. So When this occurs, um, treatments that you can do right away, one would be ice and compression and anti-inflammatory. So the ice right away is the thing to produce this reduced inflammatory response, decreasing pain. So something simple, grabbing an ice pack or just some ice that you would stick into a bag, have some barrier between the the actual ice and your skin so you don't get frost nip or frost bite on the skin, but you want to put that ice right on there. Now, the next thing, though, that helps reduce the swelling is compression. So you might use a knee sleeve or something as simple as an ace wrap. So you may see, say, a basketball player on the sidelines, and the trainer does this little trick, which is very nice, something that you can do at home. So if you have an ace wrap, what you can do is take a wrap or two around your knee and then lay the ice pack on top of that thin barrier, and then continue wrapping the ACE wrap now around the ice pack. So now you've done two things at once. You have added compression, and you've added ice. And the nice thing now is it's hands-free. So if you want to sit back and elevate it, or if you need to walk around and get something, you have the ice and compression all doing their own job at the same time. And for minor prepatellar bursitis, if you get to it quickly enough, usually that's sufficient to reduce symptoms within 24 hours. The other thing, if you don't have a contraindication to using it, is you can add in anti-inflammatories. A dose is great if it works, but typically if you're having a lot of pain or inflammation or swelling, it may take more than just one dose. So you can use your anti-inflammatory of choice over the counter, things such as ibuprofen or naproxen, or if you've been given a prescription anti-inflammatory, that triple combination treatment. So anti-inflammatories with ice and compression usually will make these symptoms go away. Now, what if they don't? So once you've exhausted your home remedies, that's where you may need to see a healthcare provider. So typically, if it's just a truly what we call aseptic, meaning not infected, prepatellar bursitis, and someone has failed compression and ice and anti-inflammatories, you can drain it and then add back in the compression and the anti-inflammatories in the ice 
And usually it's a one and done and it doesn't come back. But in some individuals, it may continue to come back. So certain times you may aspirate it and then inject a little cortisone in there to help reduce the inflammation and anti-inflammatory properties are then targeted at the source of the problem. Now, two other things that could occur. Um, one is sometimes a prepatellar bursitis can get infected. Now, typically this is when someone falls and hits their knee. So there's a, a tear or an abrasion or a cut. So there's some nick in the skin that then allows some bacteria to get through that skin and into the bursa. And this can develop into an infection. So this typically would require antibiotics and occasionally surgery uh, then to treat the infection. Um, occasionally, you get what's called a refractory uh, prepatellar bursitis. So this is something that just continues to come back over and over and over again, and it's exhausted aspirations and pills and wraps and ices, and it's very problematic. In that case, you can do what's called a surgical excision or a bursectomy. So those would be the two indications really where surgery would be needed is one, if it's infected, uh, you may need to go in there and irrigate the area, debride it, and excise that tissue. Uh, or in someone that continues to have reoccurrences, that we may have to go in there surgically and treat this. But for most people, if you do develop pre-patellar bursitis, um, you can treat this at home with ice compression and anti-inflammatories. Now, if you've had these issues in the past and you haven't had them for a while, just be cognizant uh, of when you do things that may re-aggravate it. So if you're going to be doing something where you're kneeling, you want to make sure that you have some way of either patting your knee or patting the surface that you're going to kneel on. Uh, or occasionally you can actually add a pad so you're kneeling and putting pressure more on your shin bone and that the knee is actually floating sort of in space so there's no pressure on that area. So avoidance can be key, especially if you're prone to develop this. Um, but if you have it, again, ice, anti-inflammatories, compression, and if that fails to resolve your symptoms, then you may seek out care from your healthcare provider. I hope this has answered some of the questions that you may have about knee bursitis or pre-patellar bursitis. Thanks for listening. This has been the Your Knee, Your Health podcast, and I'm Adam Rosen.
Thanks for listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. If you've not already done so, please subscribe so you'll be notified of future episodes. And if you enjoy what you're hearing, please take the time to leave a review. It helps other people like you find the show. I'm your host, Adam Rosen, and until next time, stay safe.